how you can live with the same lady day after day throughout your, your life unless you identify her your wife <laughs> and my second question is no no we'll handle one at a time <laughs> is she here <laughs> she's here okay Recently, I was uh, in a place where uh, a Jewish rabbi was speaking. This rabbi is from Denmark and talking and he was talking about some other rabbi, I don't remember the name, a very wise one who said this to someone. A man went to this rabbi and asked him, I love my wife very much, but when I walk on the street, every woman that I see, I want to do something to her. What shall I do? The wise rabbi looked at him and said, Son, it doesn't matter where you work up your appetite as long as you go home and eat. <laughs> now, if being with one person is happening only because you have identified them to be something to you, it is a stable structure, it makes a society but it destroys life. If you're being with somebody because you value that person, you're being with somebody because you love that person, you're being with somebody because you have formed some kind of intimacy and connection with that person, now it's worth being. If you've not done any of this, but you're staying with somebody just because somebody is your wife or somebody is your husband, Oh, it is definitely a torture to be with those people. Being with your wife is a horrible thing. If she is a woman that you love, it's a wonderful thing. You can't stand her, but she is your wife, that is a horrible thing. A lot of people have done this to themselves. So, being a husband or wife is a social thing. It is not an individual thing. Individual thing is two human beings have built a certain relationship that they value. That is what is the individual thing. Somebody is my wife is something that you only tell somebody. If you believe she is your wife and she has to be this, this and that, then it is just torture between two people. It is only socially you tell somebody, this is my wife. Between the two of you, she must be your lover, otherwise you should not live with her. <laughs> yes? Sadhguru, we are conditioned to 14 million frequencies and we see only thing which is within this space and time. Now polarity and identity are simultaneous things. You say get rid of all duality and we get rid of identity which is uh, physically not possible and simply because we are conditioned to space and time. Have you ever gone beyond space and time and had the taste of eternal bliss? <laughs> now, uh both space and time is a creation of your conscious mind. If you transcend the limitations of your conscious mind, there is no such thing as space and time. Modern physics is also working its way towards this direction. They're talking about eleven different dimensions in the same space. 
has always talked about 21 different dimensions in the same space. Many years ago, On a certain afternoon, till then I manage my time and space very well. <laughs> on a certain afternoon, I was I happened to be sitting on a small hillock, which which I was involved with, which I loved, which I knew very intimately. <laughs> till that moment, I always thought this is me and the rest is the other. I handled the other quite well, but still this was me and that was the other. Suddenly I burst forth into an experience. I did not know which is me and which is not me. What was me was all over the place. The very rock that I was sitting on, the very air that I breathe, the atmosphere around me, everything became me. That doesn't make logical sense. Because if you want to make any kind of logical sense, you need two. Without two, there is no logic. And suddenly there was no two, it was all me. Everything was just me. I thought this lasted for about ten to fifteen minutes. But when I came back to my normal senses, but four and a half hours had passed. I was sitting there with my eyes open, fully conscious. I was not in any kind of trance or whatever. I am fully, fully conscious. But time just flipped and I found for the first time in my adult life, tears were flowing through my eyes. Me and tears were impossible. But I've always been peaceful and happy. That's never been an issue. But here my shirt is wet, it, wet with tears and I'm bursting with a completely different kind of ecstasy, which is just the body cannot contain. When I really shake myself to my normal senses and try to understand what is happening to me, the only thing that my mind could say was, maybe I'm losing my balance, maybe I'm just going off. But it is so beautiful, I don't want to lose it for a moment. The next time this happened to me, I was sitting with my family at the dinner table. Actually, it was in my experience just two minutes. It was only two minutes, but seven hours had passed. This started happening and one day I just sat down and I thought it's maybe twenty, twenty-five minutes, but thirteen days had passed. I was sitting right there, eyes open, fully conscious. It never occurred to me that I should eat or sleep or anything. I sat in one place for thirteen days, not with any effort, not with any intention, not with any attitude towards attainment or anything. I simply sat down and looked around, thirteen days were passed. So time and space is very much the creation of your logical mind. Once you transcend that, there is no time and space. And you don't even have to cross time and space to be blissful. Blissfulness will happen to you in so many ways. Right now, I think there are lots of people here who are practicing Shambhavi Mahamudra. You sit down in the morning twenty-one minutes, you become totally blissful, drunk but fully aware. Look into my eyes and see I'm stoned all the time, but fully conscious. This moment if I want, I can flip. Or this moment, if I want, I can be alert and conduct the situation the way I want. And if you were aware of the culture, as uh, Sri Karan Singh was mentioning, Shiva is known as the Adi Yogi. He was inebriated all the time. He was drunk. At the same time, he's a perfect ascetic, sitting there in absolute meditation and drunk at the same time. This is what it means and this is what how, this is how all of us should be absolutely inebriated but perfectly stable within ourselves. 
Now, the need for seeking something from outside will completely disappear. Once you are blissful by your own nature, your life becomes an expression of your blissfulness, not in pursuit of happiness. And that's the shift that needs to happen in every life.